So a few weeks back, I made a video talking about my first time ever doing a full-blown factory reset for my Steam Deck, basically an attempt to get myself a fresh start, as it were. However, what I did not talk about in the course of that video was actually restoring all the emulators and ROMs that I had on my system previously, and that's what today's video is all about. Now, Emudeck in its early iterations was still an outrageously helpful piece of software for loading up with emulators on your system, but now it is even better, and that's what I wanted to talk about today, is what the experience was like going through round three of restoring all of my emulators and their associated ROMs, some of the things that I learned along the way, and what the experience was like checking out a couple of new systems, specifically the DS and the PS3, which I have not really messed around with much yet, so... Yeah, all that being said, let's just go ahead and start talking about EmuDeck first. Now, to be fair, this isn't my first rodeo with EmuDeck, so naturally I have a little bit of bias towards it since it's only gotten more familiar over the past couple of years, but I did notice a few positive changes that made it an even better experience than before. For starters, the wizard is even cleaner. Not that it was bad to begin with, it wasn't, but now it has a more streamlined presentation overall, and that makes a lot of the options for setting up your emulators easier to understand, complete with examples and embedded video help from RetroCore's excellent deep dive tutorials. Beyond the overall experience being a nicer one, I also noticed a few features that I don't think were there before, including a migration utility, which will allow you to move or export your entire emulation setup complete with your ROMs to another drive seamlessly, should you want to take a backup of your setup or just transfer all of your ROMs, emulators, and their associated BIOS files to a different machine. Also, while I didn't use this utility, it does have an option for setting up a USB drive for you with all the directories for your ROMs and BIOS files, so you can just throw that into your main computer to copy everything over, and then bring it back over to your Steam Deck if you prefer to get all of your files organized elsewhere, then do all that management on the Steam Deck itself. And both of these just sort of follow this consolidation trend that I've noticed throughout the entire MU Deck experience. They very precisely laid out almost every feature you would need to have a clean emulation setup on the Steam Deck directly into the interface. Meaning, if you ever need to rethink how everything's organized or how you want your ROMs presented in the Steam Deck interface, the tools to do so are right there. Including probably the most important piece of getting your games to display cleanly in the interface, Steam ROM Manager. This time around, it's much easier to understand at a glance than it was in prior versions, complete with easily understood toggles for defining what will show up directly on the Steam Deck interface, or if you'll keep everything siloed off into a front-end like Emulation Station, which is what I opted for. I also appreciated that, like a lot of other applications that require the associated app or dependency to be closed first, it will prompt you to let you know that it's just going to go ahead and shut down Steam for you before it tries to fire itself up and let you start getting all of your artwork together. Although I will say, not everything was perfectly rosy. Even though EmuDeck continues to blunt the edge of emulation's more confusing aspects, there's still some unavoidable tinkering that you'll have to do when setting up emulation on the deck. For example, while many of the systems work just fine throughout the course of normal installation, you'll still have to track down BIOS files for some of the systems, or for something more modern, you'll have to do some cyber sleuthing to track down a compatible firmware file and product keys. Thankfully, this is a lot easier because EmuDeck does include a BIOS checker tool, and this too is more tightly integrated and accessible along the left-hand side of the interface, so if you're not 100% sure if you have the correct files loaded up to enjoy your Switch or 3DS games, you can just run the checker and it'll tell you with big green or red indicators that things are okie dokie or, well, not okie dokie. Something else that was kind of weird that I ran into is that even though Steam ROM Manager did what I told it to do and only placed an icon for emulation station in my interface, it did not pull down the artwork for it when parsing the assets for some reason. But to be fair, that wasn't a huge deal since I could just manually add it through Steam, and I only have this one icon slash application as the portal into all of my emulated systems, and I'm happy to report that after launching into Emulation Station, the scraper still works wonderfully, and out of probably 200 games that I have loaded, it only struggled to find the appropriate artwork for one or two, which is probably because I manually renamed all my ROMs to be a little bit cleaner. And while we're on the subject of Emulation Station, let's go ahead and move on to some of the new stuff that I learned going back to set up all of my emulators for the third time on the Steam Deck. For starters, I did find that the 8-bit controller that I typically use while in dock mode actually has to be set to direct input mode rather than X input mode. And I discovered this whenever I was trying to navigate the emulation station interface after I was done with everything, that every time I tried to push left or right to select a specific system or up and down to select a different game, it would actually do two inputs instead of one, so I was constantly just skipping over one title that I might have wanted to select. I'm not sure if this is a bug or what, but it is something that I found in the course of troubleshooting, so yeah, if you experience this problem yourself and you're using a controller in dock mode, just make sure you have it set to de-input if you can, and that should resolve the issue. Also, a quick note on the PSP, because that's probably my favorite system to emulate on the Steam Deck. Despite the fact that most of the shortcuts are universal between different emulators that you fire up, for whatever reason, PPSSPP, which is the underlying emulator that's used by default with EmuDeck, 
Whenever you want to bring up its system menu, instead of hitting L3 plus R3, you actually have to hold select and then hit R3. I don't know what possessed me to actually try this, but I did and it randomly brought it up, so I was pretty surprised by it. But yeah, if you're having trouble getting to the PSP's configuration, this combination should get you there. And finally, something else that I learned that I wasn't really sure if it would work or not, but I was happy to see that it did, is that just like you can combine the bin and Q files for PS1 games, there are a few games that were actually CD-ROMs instead of DVDs for the PlayStation 2. This is something I was aware of, and one title in particular I was excited to play again was Contra Shattered Soldier, which happened to be a CD-ROM game. And that is that if you have a Q bin file and it's not showing up or available to play, you can actually use the built-in compression tool that EmuDeck has, which will go ahead and take those two files and turn them into a CHD file, which is also playable by the PlayStation 2 emulator. Which is great, because at this point, the only types of files that I'd actually tested for PlayStation 2 emulation would have been ISO files. So yeah, seeing that a CHD worked just fine with no problems and it let me combine Q and bin files from games that were just CD-ROMs was actually really great. And speaking of testing, I did finally test out a few new systems that I really didn't have a lot of experience with prior. The first one would be the Nintendo DS. But man, DS games run really, really smoothly for emulation. Which is great because there were so many unique experiences on the DS, like Elite Beat Agents or Super Princess Peach, and I just had so much fun with those games, and so much so that I actually kind of want to find a touch stylus to use with the Steam Deck. But we'll see what happens, and aside from that touch input, it's also really cool that there are so many different ways you can arrange the screens, considering it was a dual screen system, obviously, but with the name DS and all. And the Steam Deck is just particularly well suited to DS and 3DS games, just because not only does it have, you know, kind of a large screen for a portable, but because it has to emulate two different screens, and that screen does happen to be a touch interface that does make it just perfectly suited to emulate these types of games. Now I did go ahead and set up 3DS emulation as well, although it was a little bit trickier now that Citra doesn't exist anymore, or at least outside of like mirrors or forks like Lime, but ultimately what I ended up doing was just using Lime 3DS and just renaming it to have the same name as Citra, which did in fact work and allow me to launch games from within emulation station. So yeah, something to keep in mind if you're gonna do 3DS emulations, it might be a little bit trickier to implement. And finally, when it comes to the PS3, sadly, while I had a great experience with DS games, I still haven't quite cracked how to have a great experience with PS3 games. Case in point, of the four I tried, I could really only get one of them to launch, and that was Lollipop Chainsaw, which is great because Lollipop Chainsaw was the game that I most wanted to play, but sadly, once I got beyond that opening cutscene, the first area that I tried to play could not continue because it kept hitting a weird disk speed read error, so yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on there, but that was the game I was most excited to play using PS3 emulation. I couldn't really get it going, so at this point, I'll probably just have to hold off for that remake of Lollipop Chainsaw Repop, which I think is still coming out this year, but... Yeah, long story short, I only tried a handful of them, so maybe I just need to try some different titles or do a little bit more tinkering to see if I can get that running smoothly. So yeah, overall it was a completely rad experience. In a nutshell, I would say that the tools to get emulation up and running on your system are easier than ever. My collection of carefully curated ROMs is more organized than it's ever been, and I'm just really excited to keep revisiting old classics and also maybe explore some entirely new games and systems that I've never touched before. Specifically, I would love to try Police Knot sometime, and maybe one day I'll check out what was happening on the N-Gage back in like 2003 or something, but hey, what about you? Have you done anything related to emulation lately on your deck? If so, have you found any cool new tools or anything that you would recommend? If so, please let me know in the comments below. Make sure you stay tuned. Next week, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video to this where I talk about some of the games that I've been emulating lately. And I think this Thursday, I'll be talking a little bit about uh, No Rest for the Wicked. So yeah, that's kind of what's uh, just over the horizon, as it were. So as always, thank you so much for your time. Have a tremendous day, and I'll see you on the next one.